Hey, this is Ryan from Simple Lab again, here to give you an update about the East Palestine, Ohio train derailment. Today, we're gonna to look at some test results. So what we have here is a 100 kilometer radius around the derailment site where I have filtered to test results uh, in that area. If I turn off that radius and zoom in, we've got a couple different types of water being tested. Yellow here represents utility water being tested. Green is groundwater. And then up here, this one blue dot, that's a surface water test, like a pond or something like that. Now, many of these tests aren't gonna be re relevant to the train derailment. So let's zoom in even closer. Another thing I wanna note is these points are not at exactly the locations that they were tested. They're in the general vicinity to give you the gist, but they've been jittered around a little bit to maintain privacy. Each of these points represents a single sample of water, but it's actually getting sent to the lab and checked for lots of different contaminants. So there are lots of different results that we get associated with each point. So in order to visualize that, I'm gonna turn on this other layer. And what we've done here is we've splayed out the results from each sample in these circles surrounding the sample point. So in some cases, we're testing for hundreds of different contaminants. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so that we are not seeing overlap. Okay, and then each result comes back as, uh, it's complicated. It could be a non-detect, it could be a detection, but not quantifiable. Instead of digging into all of that, I just categorized each result as three different categories. It's either non-detect, some contaminant, or a potentially concerning level of contaminant. And those are transparent, yellow, and red. So to talk about what each of those means, these transparent dots, which we see the most of, means a non-detect, and that's a, a good thing with a caveat. So most of the time when you check for something, you shouldn't find it, and that seems to be what we're seeing here. A non-detect doesn't mean that the contaminant isn't there at all. It just means that it's below a level of detection that the lab equipment could pick up. You can almost never completely eliminate the possibility that a contaminant is there, but you can get it down to a pretty low level. So how do you determine the difference between some contaminant registering and enough contaminant registering that it's time to be concerned? Well, everybody does it differently. You need to determine a benchmark to rely on for each contaminant. One that you could use is the MCL, the maximum contaminant level, which is established by the federal government, the uh, EPA. And that's what regulates all drinking water facilities. But it's considered with both human health and economic reasonability in mind. So you might aspire to something that's a little bit more conservative, like the MCLG, the goal MCL, if you had unlimited money. We use benchmarks that tend to be a little bit more conservative. So when something flags as red on here, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going, it's freak out time. It just means that you should start to be concerned at this level. So having said all that, let's dive into some results. Over here, we've got 60 contaminants that were checked for all non-detects. Same over here, all non-detects. But over here, we've got a couple that are registering as red, which is potentially concerning. So let's look at that. The two contaminants that are potentially concerning are chloroform, which is a VOC, and total trihalomethanes. So I know that VOCs were spilled from the train, like vinyl chloride. Does that mean this is related? Well, probably not. So it turns out that chloroform is a type of VOC that's extremely common in drinking water, and it's caused by disinfectants, such as chlorine, uh, being added to water to prevent bacterial infection. Uh, but those disinfectants then interact with organic molecules in the water, and it, it creates this VOC. So it's extremely common, uh, something of potential concern, not necessarily just something to freak out about, um, but it's not related to the train. Let's jump over to this other one where we've got a couple uh, medium and high detections. So the potentially concerning detections are lead and total coliform. Lead comes from pipes most often, leaching into the water, uh, and total coliform is a bacteria that can get into the water, especially groundwater coming from wells. Both are of concern, you really don't want them in your water, but neither is related to the train. So to spoil it for you, I actually zoomed out and looked at all of the tests, and so far I haven't seen anything attributable to the train derailment. Does this mean that everything is okay? Well, not necessarily. Uh, the first thing to ask is, are we even looking for the right things? 
I can confirm that we're looking for vinyl chloride, and so far no tests have shown up with any that levels of concern of that. And we are also awaiting the results of dioxins, and these will be really interesting. Uh, it's possible that dioxins will be present, well, whether because of the, the burn or because uh, of existing pollution. Then there's a variety of other contaminants that are hard to test for or are expensive or, or tests that we just haven't set up yet. So it's tricky. It's going to take a while to know with any confidence how concerned we should be about all of this. And in the meantime, the contaminants are going to spread. They're going to break down into other contaminants. And we just don't know what all that is going to look like yet. So the best thing we can do is keep on testing, keep monitoring the organizations that are testing, encourage them to test for all of the potential contaminants, and we'll just have to see. If we at Simple Lab find anything of concern, we'll bring you some more information about it. But until then, thanks for watching.